welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined as always by Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we've got eight games here on Wednesday night to discuss with you guys. We're taking a look in this one at NOLA. They are playing host to these Dallas Mavericks with Kyrie and Luka in the lineup for them on a back-to-back as well. Uh, We'll take a look at some of the numbers in there. Also got another game video up for you and our player props. So make sure to like and subscribe to that page. We're coming back to you guys each and every weekday during this regular season. And then pretty much every game during that postseason as well that we can get for you guys. Also want you to head to thelines.com. That's where you can check out all the great written content as the NBA is in full swing up on the site right now. also get that uh, odds finder tool on there. That's where you can chop all those lines. Make sure you're getting the best bets back, uh, the best odds back on all those bets you make in the NBA this season. Nate, let's go ahead and jump into this slate real quick for everyone and then talk about these uh, NOLA and Mavs game. Yeah, we got Hawks minus three and a half at the Wizards. That opened at minus seven and a half. A lot of line movement here uh, early on the day. The Blazers are plus 10 at Boston. It's played three overtime periods at the Celtics. In the last four days, so I'm a little interested in Blazers to cover, as is most of the public money here. Um, the Mavs we're talking about are on a back-to-back beat after beating the Jazz. They are in a pick here at New Orleans, totals 233. Cavs, minus one and a half at Heat. We got Thunder, plus 13 at the Unstoppable Suns right now. Uh, the Bulls, they're climbing in terms of being underdogs in Denver, Denver's won 22 straight at home with Jokic, so that's fair. They're plus nine and a half now. And then the other game we break down, Raptors are plus three. They open at plus five at the Clips, who are looking for their second win in the Russell Westbrook era. And uh, we'll look at that one. But, I mean, we're going to talk about this game presuming that both Kyrie and Luka are playing on a back-to-back here. You never know, so just stay on top of that. Not that I would, you know have a problem taking the Mavs to win without Kyrie uh, if it's just Luka out there. Uh, But what I would have more hesitancy about is the over. Um, Because when you have both those guys in there, when you have Kyrie out there, the pace has just been starkly different. The scoring, the lack of defense. I mean, part of that has to do with the fact that they gave up Dorian Finney-Smith and others to get Kyrie. But their defense has has been abysmal. We talked about it in player props, etc., um, 121 defensive rating, giving up 121 points, scoring 123, and going six and two to the over in eight games with both those guys out there. You look at their last four in particular, and the and they've won two of their last three, so it's been a bit more successful. They're scoring 126. Um, the pace is up to 101. This is a Mavs team that last year and the year before was dead last in pace, and and now they're 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 flying around and still hitting a ton of threes because of the the spacing those guys can afford. Twenty threes per game at forty five percent in these last four. So New Orleans is kind of a pack it in defense. They they have good defensive numbers across the board that are better at home. Uh, I know you can get down in the weeds worrying about that, but. The the concern for me isn't that New Orleans might, um, you know, defend Mavs really well. It's will they be able to score because their offense has been among the worst in the league. However, they've also played seven of their last eight at home. Their only home game in that span against Orlando, say it with me, it went under. Uh, but the previous four home games since getting Brandon Ingram back, they scored 122 a game, 127 rating, uh, three and four. Three and one to the over, uh, even got to 225 against the Cavs, who are the best defense, uh, second best defense now in the league. Um, And the key here for the matchup is that Jose Alvarado is still out, as is Larry Nance. Very good defenders, both of them off the bench. But Alvarado vital in this matchup if Kyrie's active because he's exactly the kind of pesky, quick defender that can slow Kyrie down. He did in the last two when Kyrie was on the Nets. Kyrie had rough uh, splits and an 87 offensive rating in those games. His previous three against the Pels before Alvarado was really a part of their plans or even on the roster, averaged 32 a game, eight assists with a 141 offensive rating. And Luka has also shredded the Pels. He shredded a lot of uh, division opponents, but last four for the Mavs against the Pels, they've won three of four. Three or four have gone over. Luca's averaged 38 a game in just 34 minutes because the last time he played, he hurt his heel, had uh, 30, what, 34 points already in 23 minutes before bowing out of that yeah. one. So 
Uh, I guess lastly, let me just go through the back-to-back situation because the Mavs are their worst at their worst here in back-to-backs. Uh, they've played one with Kyrie so far, and it was an overtime loss at sack. Luka missed two of the three previous ones, and they gave up 140-plus. So it definitely bodes well for an over if you're going to say that their already poor defense is going to be worse. Um, before that, they actually won on a back-to-back in Denver, which is the last time those Nuggets have lost with Nikola Jokic at home. So I like the Mavs to, to continue to string together some positivity here with the win. I mean, the Pelicans are, are awful. They're 7-20. and 20 in their last 27 games here. Some of that is, is road splits, but most of it's just, they don't have Zion. And now they don't have two key guys that I mentioned, uh, especially for guarding those, those superstars in the backcourt. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that I don't agree with is the over part, to be honest with you. Um, and, and I, I would still take Dallas to be able to win this game. If Kyrie doesn't play as well, uh, not sure why he wouldn't, I guess. I mean, I don't, there's nothing nagging that I know of that, that seems to be an issue for him. He's been pretty healthy since he got to Dallas and, uh, and he's played every game in, in those seven games that he's been there. So I would say expect him to play. Uh, but the, the small spread does sort of make you think they, they haven't been blowing anybody out, right? Even in the Kairuka era, um, they're, they're not winning games by more than 10 that like they won double digit win against, uh, the, the Spurs there. So, you know, nothing, whatever you want to take away from that. Um, but everything else is, is, is kind of close games for them because I think even, you know, you've seen them build two leads actually, uh, in, in double digits and then give blow both of them, um, or at least one of them and almost blow the other one. So, um, I, I think in, in this one, like I, I think Nola can at least hang around. I'm not touching that spread at minus one, but 234 seems high for me for what I'm kind of focused on. I mean, for me, it's the home road stuff for uh, for the for the, the Pelicans, which they don't play defense on the road, um, and they play it pretty well at home, allowing fewer than 110 points uh, on the season over their last uh, eight at home. Not great numbers for them. Very very bad winning. They're three and five, um, and only scoring 111, but only giving up 110. Continuing to play at a 96 pace, third slowest. Um, in that time. And then, you know, everything that they do well and how this team is built is predicated on Zion being available. <laughs> they, they have two wing scores and then they have a bunch of guys that can crash, right? And, and get to the rim and are athletic and get and put up second chance points, get offensive rebounds, get out in transition because guys like, you know, Trey Murphy and, and when Zion's in and guys like that can get a rebound and just go. Um, everybody on their team is big enough to get a board and then just go except for basically CJ McCollum. Um, so I, I think, the fact that they still need that to happen, but they don't have Zion in there. They're also not going to have the speedy Jose Alvarado, which I kind of like also for slowing the pace down a bit more um, when he's in the game, he's going. Um, and without Zion, like I said, they're still, you know, depending on things like getting the fourth most offensive rebounds, um, but not being able to necessarily finish as a result of that. They're still 18th and second chance points uh, at home over their last eighth, despite getting the fourth most offensive rebounds. Um, and they also don't get defensive rebounds at 20, 23rd there in terms of defensive rebound percentage at that time. But that's not how Dallas is going to score. Um, they are getting points in the paint. Dallas is allowing a ton of those. So that is an area that they could dominate and, and help score. Uh, but I th- still think that's a slower game. It's still a choppier, muck it up, get two pointers kind of game. Um, and, and they're not going to get anything in transition because they don't get out in transition if Zion's not on the court uh, for, for the Pellies. So um, the other thing, you know, is they're just great at defending the three, which you would expect when you have a bunch of big cagey guys um, like Trey Murphy, like Herb Jones and everybody else that just keeps piling off their bench like that. Um, that's in that similar vein. You know, th- That's why, the, you know, this matchup for me, obviously Dallas still scoring uh, the second most amount of points. They're still first, actually, uh, but the, the dubs are creeping up on them in terms of or, uh, in terms of like that three point scoring. They're also getting all the most ISO ball there. And I think the ind- individual defenders for the Pellies are, are decent at that. Obviously, Luca changes everything up. I know there's been a few overs before uh, in these games, even without Zion in these matchups. Um, but I think also Dallas playing on the road since they've he, they've gotten Kyrie, they're two and two there. They are sc- scoring a, f- uh, a few less points and allowing a few less points, only allowing 117 in those two in those four road games versus the like 121 they're giving up the whole time uh, since Luca uh, since Kyrie got there. Um, they're allowing the fifth highest field goal percentage, but uh, the fifth lowest three pointers and and made and, and percentage, um, which it doesn't matter because that's, you know, Norans isn't going to score from there. So 
the fact that they can't score, stop the paint, the fact that, you know, th- that they uh, can't really stop anybody from scoring twos either, to be honest, does make you worry that New Orleans can hang because that's where they score from. Um, but I think they're going to be able to limit second chance points, limit defensive rebounds like they've been doing on the road, second best in limiting defensive rebound percentage, seventh best in terms of limiting second chance points. Um, so they are crashing the defensive boards, even though they're not really doing much on the offensive side. Um, so I think there's a- opportunity for, for this game to, to stay under 234 where it's creeped up uh, and I'm ha- happy to go under as it keeps going up. You're kind of talking me into the over even more by saying that New Orleans is going to be able to actually find success down low where they haven't really been scoring. They haven't been doing their part to get over anywhere on the road lately. But if Joe Val's having a big game, I mean, their their numbers are, are often with no Brandon Ingram. But I just pointed out, yeah, since he got in the lineup in their four home games here, 123 a game, uh, he's had some explosions. He, that, he's been very good against Dallas. And now there's no DFS to guard him either. So I do think they'll be able to score. And if they're competitive, look, Dallas has given up leads or coming back because they can score so fast now because they have both of these guys, yeah. right? And it's, it's I go, you go. And it's all, awfully simple, but obviously it just comes down to will they hit threes? And, and you say, yeah, New Orleans is a great three-point defense. It's pretty much fluctuated. Dallas beating them or or scoring north of 120 if they're going to hit their threes. They shot 45 and 47% in two of these last two meetings with Nola. Still managed to win one while shooting 34%. That was at home. Lost a close one uh, shooting 31% in Nola. But that, those, those games, both in Nola, still did go over the total that was set. Uh, so I think it is a little low. If Kyrie's going to play, I mean, he's just such a prolific offensive player and he's going to continue to push the pace. And and Alvarado, while they might be a slower pace, 122 defensive rating in four games without him. The defensive rating also rises without Nance. So even if you're talking a 98 pace or a little slower, that still should be good for about 240 if if that efficiency is going to maintain. All right, fine. You convinced me to now. (laughs) As I finished speaking on my points, I started to realize... Yeah, wait, wait. If Nola can score, um, but I, I want Kyrie to be in this game. Uh, that's that's the full disclaimer. I, Kyrie yeah. in this game. Okay, yeah, over two thirty four. I'm looking at like even if they allow one hundred seventeen on the road, which is better than they have been at home for the Mavs. That means they need one hundred and eighteen points to get over. Uh, th- and I think they could easily do that every single time. I mean, th- book it for one twenty uh, when they've got Kyrie and Luca. As long as they're not missing everything from deep, they can basically hit like. 34% of their threes from from deep when they're shooting nearly 40 of them uh, and still, you know, get that 120 pretty easily, especially getting to the line the way that uh, Kyrie and Luca have been as well. So, all right, back to the over. I'm with you on it. Uh, and that is all the time we have for you. Uh, it took Nate about 13 minutes to convince me uh, to take his point. And now we're in that position together. Uh, like and subscribe to that page. Go ahead and make sure that you can check out the other couple of videos we have up for you, including those player props. Until we see you next, happy betting. Happy betting.